Hello everyone. So in the last episode we created an object called a drop hab, but we can't put it in the world yet because we don't have any method to do that. So today we're going to make it so that when you hit space, you drop uh, a drop hab wherever you happen to be pointing with your reticle. So to do that, we need to tell the player IO that this is what it's dropping. So here's the player IO script. And we have this selected inventory byte, which is just a brick. We're going to consolidate later so that it's all in one inventory management system, but for now we're just going to put in a, bla a placeholder object. Like this. And now we're going to go ahead and actually drag the drop hab onto it. And the next step is to make it so that when we hit space, we actually get to uh, put it down. So here in update, we're going to go ahead and check and see whether or not we hit space. I believe that, no, I actually believe that it's jump. Let's go ahead and just take a look. You can check and see how your buttons are assigned by going into the project settings input. Sorry, that was slightly off screen and just looking and seeing what it's set to. So here we are, jump is equal to space. So that's what we're using. So uh, we don't actually want it to be get button, we want it to be get button down, because if it was get button, then it would continually fire every frame, which wouldn't be very wise. So now we're gonna do a raycast, and you might have figured out this raycast here. Now one of the things we do have a problem with is, uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but our max interaction range is too low. And that's because we're a tall mech and the camera is very far away from the ground. So I'm just going to up that so we can actually select things on the ground. And then we're just going to copy this exact same uh, thing here. Except that since we're going to copy it, we're going to go ahead and just put it up here. Because those are actually going to be the same either way. So here we are. So we've got a couple of things we need to do. The first thing we need to do is we need to actually make sure that it's a chunk. And the reason for that isn't because we care about the chunk. It's because we want we want to make sure that we have clicked on terrain and are not in fact dropping a building on a building. So if chunk equals null, then we've dropped it in the right spot and we can continue. Uh, so we just say instance, let's go ahead and actually save it. So game object. Uh, hab equals instantiate and then it's the orbital inventory item and we want it to be in oh uh, instant did I spell that wrong? I don't think so hmm I don't really know why it's not auto completing anymore but whatever I'll just continue um, because I happen to know that we want it to be at a transform, so hit dot point, and then uh, uh, quaternion dot. Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's just go ahead and instantiate it like that, and then move it. And the reason for that is because I want to keep it at whatever its rotation is, and that's because our drop hab actually starts rotated, and I don't want to unrotate it. So, uh, crush. Doesn't seem to have worked. Let's take a look and put in some debug code real quick. First off, let's get rid of this. Oh, what am I doing? That's the problem. That's the reason it didn't work. Um, <sighs> I'm having a little bit of a hard time with my mic. I hope it's not sounding... I hope you can't hear it. There we are. So as you can see, we can now place Habs, and as you can see, they are really tiny. And that's correct. That's the size they're supposed to be. And they are, in fact, bumpy. I can walk on top of them. And, in fact... Um, the only problem with them as it is, is that they don't, oh, here's me, 
using the button clicks, yeah, so that still works. The only problem with them is that they're not square on a tile. Now the question is, do we want them to be square on a tile? Do we care whether or not they are square on the tile? Um, it might actually be preferable if we let the player put them in however he would like. And this actually fits together with my larger idea of how this mechanic will work um, for laying out bases, because it doesn't involve stacking together a whole bunch of objects corner to corner. And therefore, I think I'm going to leave it so that they can, in fact, be placed uh, not exactly on a square brick. But this does mean that we're going to have to spend a little bit of attention on... Um, and you notice that, by the way, the foot inherits from them when I step on them. That's kind of cool. Just the way that we did that. Um, I can't be right, though, because I didn't set it to be... No, it just, just was luck. Uh, it doesn't inherit from them. Um, although I could make it inherit from them, from them. That, would be, that would be kind of interesting. Uh, anyhow, there are a lot of concerns here that we need to address, such as overlapping with other items and um, the fact that you can dig out underneath them and they don't fall and stuff like that. And we are going to address them, but that's enough for today. So that's going to be it for today. And you can download this if you'd like, although I can't imagine why you would since it's barely anywhere near complete. Um, the next thing we'll probably do is make it so that um, these things check to see whether or not they need to move uh, and have them drop from the sky. Alright, so I'll see you next episode.